Right, let it build, let it build, let it build. It's getting louder. I just hit the microphone. Let's go. All right, that's crazy. But we're back. We're back. We're back. Welcome, Kyle. What's Welcome up? Welcome back, Kyle. Uh, I don't know what the f- up today. I cursed again. We're going to bleep that out, though. It's okay. It's the um, uncensored version. This is the uncensored version. Let me roll this out real quick. What does that mean, the uncensored version? Everything. I'm showing everything. I'm not showing nothing today. <laughs> no, then I got to label my the episode as, what is it, adults only or something on YouTube? Something like that. That's been a thing I've been figuring out on YouTube. I've been looking into the algorithms and yeah. stuff. See, I almost said that. Figuring almost, out how to get monetized. Yeah, I almost, I almost cursed. But apparently, like I said, you can't curse in the first few minutes of it. So I'm going to keep it I'm gonna keep it clean for a few. Um, we got a lot of different things going on today, guys. I'm sure y'all can see this beautiful faces of ours are really ugly whatever it's just gonna be in high definition our friend delaney is actually shooting everything today she's got some awesome camera gear she's doing some cool stuff around make sure y'all check her out at golden house photography i'm gonna plug it in the description and stuff like that she just offered to come out and film because she's just a bad she's a baddie badass not a baddie i'm not gonna say that but i think it's been long enough that i can curse now so she's a badass there you go yeah she's doing some real cool shit so, like I said, we're either going to look really good or you're going to see how ugly we really are in HD, <laughs> one or the other. I don't know. Um, man, how was your day today? It's fantastic. Yeah? A great day, brother. Why was it fantastic? You woke up and you went to work. What Actually, happened? I went to school this morning. You went to school? I had class. I had class. Yeah. Got my, all my shit done. Would you go I, I felt I just for? felt productive today. That's all. Yeah? You know? Would you, what, what classes did you have today? Uh, I had some trade class. I had a psych class. And that's it. Yeah. You know? I don't know if like you've ever settled in a podcast, but what are you studying? Uh, so I'm majoring in computer science. Right That's now. a nerd. That's yeah, the nerd back nerd right shit. off the bat. We've got some nerd news today too, actually. So we'll yeah. get into that in a bit. But uh, I mean, what the hell made you do that from being in a cult to wanting to do computer science? Uh, it's just something I really enjoyed. I always loved technology. Uh, always like messing with computers. Someone want to explore. Yeah. You know? I never had that opportunity to. You even think to it's, expand my knowledge. You think it's because like, you found out how to kind of escape or what the real world was through I don't know a computer if it was directly because of that, yeah. but I don't know. It's just always been a very interesting topic of mine that I like. But y'all so. couldn't really like mess with it. You couldn't like really fuck with computers. It wasn't even that. There. It was just like I, right? couldn't, I couldn't even go to college. Oh. That was the thing. Okay, so yeah, what, that was holding me yeah, back. Yeah, I forget that. What's, the, what's up with that? Uh, they just kind of, it's like a lot of fundamentalist groups. They don't like to have people gaining more knowledge because the more knowledgeable you are the better at critical uh reasoning you are yeah you can see right through their bullshit you know it's the village is that that movie yeah yeah, yeah. Is that what you're talking about i think, yeah. I think we might have talked about that before but it, uh-huh. it's been a while so one day you're gonna come on this podcast and it's not gonna be about your jehovah's witness past it's <laughs> just gonna be about once an episode yeah we gotta mention it right 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 i gotta um you create the narrative you continue the narrative so people, yeah so y'all come back and listen to calls that's my expertise yeah the cult the freaking occult stuff. Um, man, today I had a uh, little bit interesting, a little bit stressful day. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. So I went over to my mom's house today and I had to help her build the desk. She's working from home now. Okay. Um, she just got a new job. Congratulations to mom. Hold on. She deserves she deserves some cheers. Yeah, a round of applause for mom. Um, and that's enough. So she had this job and, and, and it was doing fine for her and she was doing some cool stuff. Actually, she, she used to work at the Ark, which is where I have the sweater nice, from, nice. but they don't need that. Um, she just wasn't like really, you know, like fulfilled, right? Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. She was making decent money, just not like happy with it per se. Maybe yeah. she don't want to put all her business out there, but I'm going to relate it back to us because it's like she took that risk and left that job and then went and found another job that it's yeah. new to her. She had to learn some new stuff and she's enjoying it a little bit more. She gets to work from home now with awesome. everything happened and stuff like that. And I feel like it's just kind of like motivational to like see my mom do that. You know, a parent, someone that's settled in in their 50s and like you think they have that, you know, it just shows you where everyone has their own different path in life yeah. and nothing has to be necessarily solidified. And we focus on that stuff so much nowadays, oh, yeah. like stressing about, are we on the right path? Are we doing the right thing? You know, are we making the right moves? Should I be investing? Should I be doing yeah. all this, that, and the other? But it, it's like. That honestly used you to be one of my biggest fears. Fears, right. Yeah. And it's, it's a stre- thing. Stress, it's a big stressor. And it's like, like somebody like me who kind of started off late in life and a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Like it just stressed me out for the longest time. 
And then I was able to actually, I went to therapy for a while and that kind of helped because like you said, everybody has their own different path. Yeah. You just got to focus on that, you know? And I mean, that's just the way you view it. Like you view it as starting late in life, but it, it, who's to say it's late, you know? Yeah, it's but like, it, it, that, exactly. All that shows you is like, there's, it is never too late to start over in life yeah. and to find something you want to do. And, and sometimes it's like, you, you're so settled in and you're comfy and you're scared of that yeah. change, but that change sometimes is what you need. And it sounds like some corny ass shit we were starting off with, but it just was like kind of inspirational to me, you know, like I take off days of my work to try and put this on to just try and like, you know, pursue something in the future possibly, or just pursue one of my passions and stuff like that. And it just shows me that, you know, it's never too late for a change or like to just really make yourself happy and stable at the same time instead of just like, oh, I need money, 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 yeah. money. It's just. It's more about happiness. If you don't. Yeah, if you're working and you're not happy, like no one's ever going to be 100% happy with their job. But just like it's always one of those things you got to balance out that money and happiness. Because I know I've got some friends that are like, you know, and that's another thing too is that everyone has their different values. Yeah. Some people value money a lot more. I'm not saying one's wrong, people define one's right. success differently. Yeah. I guess I'm speaking more of myself. It's just doing what I'm enough to what I need to make sure I'm situated well and continue to pursue what makes me happy and stuff like that that's awesome anyway so that's a long segue to say congratulations mom she gets air horns um i love you shout out to you mom beyond that i said uh i guess we'll jump back into no wait i wanted to wrap that up actually yeah 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 yeah. yeah. what i was going into that um so i helped build a desk today at her house oh yeah and um i was just setting it up and I, the more and more like older i get me more i realize that me and my mom are the same person like the same things trigger us the same things set us off and we have like the same fucking add mindset like, i got home and the first thing i did you know hi mom like how you been whatever hug you know um we start talking and then she's like all right i'm gonna make you some coffee so she starts to put the coffee like pot on she opens it fills it up with water doesn't put coffee in it, leaves it open, walks away and starts doing some other stuff in the room. And then I went to go make my cup and I was like, I didn't even say nothing. And I was like, ah, yeah, no, I see. I see where I get it from. <laughs> so that, and then I brew that. She was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like I forgot. I'll start doing this other stuff. And I was like, mom, no, it's cool. And then, so I'm building this desk where I built it and I put it in her room and she, i never realized this. I'm very, very particular. You know this just oh, yeah. because like Super. how particular I am about everything. And we were setting up her new office space in her room and she wanted to make it, you know, like nice, like a nice place to work at. And I'm so used to like having like a gaming slash like video editing desk yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, this is what works for me. And so I'm trying to set it up like that. My mom is left handed too on top of everything <laughs> and I'm right handed. So she's like, no, I need this space on my desk. My computers need to be this way in this orientation because I need to see them this way. I want to turn my head from the light. Uh, this way, like so the, the window exactly to be right what here. You would have done exactly what I would have done, <laughs> and we were button heads. I was like, "Mom, no, like this is dumb. Do it this way." <laughs> and then she was like, "No, that's not comfortable for me." So I had to like, I'm like, "All right, mom, you call me over here to help you." So you know what? I'm not gonna put my opinion in it. You tell me what you want, and like we kind of came to a conclusion, and like it looks real good. Like she's happy. She's got a little desk set up in there now. That's nice. And um, yeah, so I just realized that fuck, like. I'm going to either get worse and worse or more particular or figure out exactly what I want. But like, also I respect that too about people that know what they want. Oh yeah. But yeah. that's enough about, I guess us too. Also, I'm sure y'all can hear, uh, I sound super nasally today. I don't know what the hell's up. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm feeling well. As but, long as uh, you're feeling fine. Yeah. You're not going to give me nothing. I think Kyle gave me something last time he came through. Uh-uh. A booga or something. Uh, uh, not a booga. A germ. <laughs> a booga. <laughs> uh, speaking of nerd bag, though, last time we talked about... What did we cover last time What you brought oh, up? Oh, the Activision Microsoft shit. Activision Microsoft bundle. Our <laughs> purchasing thing. Um, this week in our nerd news. Um, so, nerd news. That's our new segment. Mm-hmm. Nerd news. <laughs> nerd news. Uh, so, Sony, which is the direct competitor of Microsoft, is actually buying Bungie for $3.6 billion. Now, that's kind of like useless unless you know that Bungie used to be a Microsoft studio. Really? Yeah. So, they made Halo. They made... Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. read that. And they were like owned by Microsoft yeah. or something or partnered with Didn't Microsoft. They, they made like the first Halo game or something? Yeah. They made like, I think most of like the, the first three Halo games okay. or something like that. I mean, then I don't know what happened then. The studio broke up or something like that. And 343 came in to finish a bunch of stuff and work on a bunch of stuff. But um, yeah, Bungie was Halo's developer at least. At the very least, I know that. 
and Sony just bought Halo's original developer. I feel like that's like a slap, not a slap in the face, but like a counter that to sounds, like almost sounds kind of petty. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like, um, it, it, yeah, it might be like that. It might be a power play to just show them that, like, look, here's what we could have, here's what we did in retaliation yeah. to you, and like three point six billion to Sony. That's probably like petty cash. So they're just like, yeah, throw some money at this. How much was that other deal worth? Like forty six billion or something insane, like that. Yeah. But also, like, there is new. Uh, I got new news about that um, from this week. So apparently, with that, um, the Activision, and this is another uh, article I'm reading from, but the Activision sale um, to Xbox will be reviewed by the FTC. Mm-hmm. Uh, like they might have like some kind of monopoly. Yeah. So it's something okay. like that. So this is an article from the page uh, Controller on Instagram, and it says the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard is being investigated by the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, the goal of the investigation is to determine if the sale will harm competitors. In this case, is specifically looking at if it's limiting access to Activision's biggest games. Mm, okay. So that's what we were talking about last yeah, time. You like know, like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, what is it? Overwatch yeah. and, and all that stuff that Blizzard owns too. Um, it's also saying like the FTC, uh, under Biden administration has promised to toughen up its handling on deals such as this, especially those involving tech companies. I mean, like tech companies are like the big future, like in the next few years and the next few decades, everything's going to be the metaverse, bro. That's uh, yeah. That's another thing too. But like all these companies are, are like the tech companies, like Silicon Valley, all these, these tech bros, that's going to be the next like big leaders and stuff we're already seeing like elon how much people look at him almost, yeah. almost a politician or a rock he's, star he's or literally like as influential as a politician yeah he's he's an influencer on top of all that stuff and it's hard to they have to watch this stuff because they all have you know it's almost to an insider trading part you can you can post one thing and make so many people sell this stock yeah. buy this stock and there's been all kind of controversies a lot around of manipulation. that and that's just what they're trying to i guess avoid but um i mean that being said like all these other tech companies and stuff like that. When I say this is the future, I mean, Apple's supposedly making a smart car and stuff like that. Mm. I mean, we have smart cars, electric cars, all that stuff. That's all the future and everything's going to get more and more complex with yeah. technology and more Everything's going to be more integrated. microchips. Yeah. The next step is literally just integrating the technology into us ourselves. Yeah. And I think the government might be scared of that. They're not yeah. going to have the power on everything anymore. You know, it's going to be a lot of, and I mean, granted, who's to say they do now? Who's to say they don't now? They definitely try. You can't like ignore that. No. You can't say that doesn't exist. But I think it's just a foot in the door trying to stop them from taking over these huge monopoly things. Kind of like what happened with, uh, I mean, this is way before our time, but like Rockefeller and all that stuff with the yeah. oils and the steel industry yeah. and railroad industry. Uh, they've stepped in so many times to stop. And I guess this is just a new revolution, like tech revolution. Yeah. That's that's the new renaissance is the technology age. And it's crazy, man, to think that. But it is. It's like we've been having technology and internet around since like 90s like prevalently like it's been around since way before it's i think 70s. in the grand scheme of things it's very very recent yeah i guess so if we think about it but in the last like when i think about like what happened from like 1900 to 2000 like in that 100 year span we went from not being able to fly to landing on the moon so to think of what's going to happen from in the next 100 years 100 years it's going to be fucking insane you yeah. think you think we're gonna get to the point of like flying cars where everyone has one and teleportation and all that stuff I don't know. We were supposed to have it this year or two years ago. We were supposed to have hoverboards. Oh, from Back to the Future? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder why they picked that date. Is that like a specific date? It seemed so far in the future from when they made that movie. Or like the movie um, 2000, A Space Odyssey. uh, Yeah, yeah. And that's all. 2001. 2001. There you go. Um, In other nerd news, speaking of Controller, which is the last writer of that, um, I've ordered this fucking controller from Amazon. It was just like limited edition Microsoft controller. It was like a, a older one, but it was like a brand new condition. And it was like super cool. Been needing a new controller for a minute. I ordered it and the wrong one came in. And the price since then has gone way, way, way up. So I'm oh, worried that bro. if I try and return it, they're just going to refund me. And then I'm going to have to just pay a bunch more. I feel like oh, I got scammed. Damn. That sounds like it. They, they fucked you over. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm disappointed about it, and I've been waiting and talking up about it. But whenever you ordered it, like it had multiple options. No, like no, options? no, 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 no. It oh, was okay. like a one specific. It was a SKU, like our SKU. Um, about it. Now we got a lot of shit to talk about today. I feel like it's going to be another episode. It's all over. Last time was like really short, 
we wrapped up nerd news. I don't think we have anything else in nerd news. I'm gonna try and get some segments and stuff like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, how you feel about uh, music? Let's jump into music, man. <laughs> anything new you've been listening to? Uh nothing new, new. Yeah, I feel that it's kind of been nothing stagnant really for a while. New music has dropped recently. I feel like ever since the you know still the Kanye and Drake albums dropped that no one's really put out anything. I mean, like, there's albums that's been out, and I've listened to a lot of stuff, but nothing that's made, like, big news. The Dell album was cool. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, nothing else has been really, really big. Um, I got something, though, for you. You remember that Drake album cover? Which one? <sighs> the Certified Lover Boy, right? Yeah. Um, remember that album covers a bunch of pregnant women? Yeah, yeah, the little pregnant emojis. Yeah, so check this segue out. I mean, it's right in itself. I feel like ever since that album cover came out, there's been a lot more pregnant women coming out. I mean, in the COVID things opening up, which you feel like that music might have put very some possible. of that stuff into the air. It's very possible. Well, I mean, everyone's kind of heard this by now, but this is the big news. Uh, don't expect any music from Rihanna for a long ass time again. <laughs> there was already waiting forever. It was 2016 never since that Auntie came out. That's a fucking great album. I know TikTok's been taking a lot of those songs and remixing them and making them pop again, but that's one of like, that's up there, my top albums. Um, Rihanna and ASAP Rocky are expecting their first kid. So, y'all not getting shit. You're not getting no music from Rihanna for a long ass time. But Rocky's got some stuff on the way with uh, Nico and a bunch of other people. Um, it's just kind of uh, push a T. A bunch of people like that in that circle are releasing a big like collab tape. It's actually a Nico tape. Um, like the counterpart to Pharrell. He's another yeah. producer that produces with him. And uh, they had a group back in the day and they're associated with like NERD and shit like that. Anyway, I guess music, like I try to talk about something, but there's nothing going on. Besides that, we know Rihanna's not coming. See, I thought she was pregnant like several months ago. I mean, obviously was she was because these pictures just came out. The rumors might have been out, but she's like showing and stuff in her in her pictures. They got her pictured in New York right now, and the blizzard just ended, and she's got, like, her stomach <laughs> out show. And I know it's just cold as fuck out there. Oh, gotta be. I don't know. Um, what do you feel about your, like, artists whenever they have kids? I, it, I mean, it's a whole different part of their life that's kind of distracts from what they're doing as far as their art goes, yeah. you know? But I feel like in rock, that's not a big thing. Like, people have kids, and so they like, congratulate them, but, like, in hip-hop... You're saying, why is it a bigger deal with this? Not necessarily a bigger deal. It's a big deal, because these are, like, some of the biggest, like, influencers and just, like, beautiful people that yeah. are out there. But I'm saying, like, I remember when, like, Drake had his kid, and I granted, no, he's, like, the fucking biggest artist in the world, but in rap and stuff like that, and hip-hop, and just urban, or, like, even pop, like, even pop culture and shit like that, every time someone has a, a kid there, it's, like, a huge news. But like, why does it become an obsession yeah, from the not, public eye? Yeah. It's just, I guess it's more popular music. Like, rock's not yeah. that popular. So, when, like, rock stars have kids and stuff like that, um, it's not that big of a deal. Maybe it's also, too, that a lot of rock stars are, like, it's a more male, like, dominated genre, generally speaking. And so, like, when a man has a kid, it doesn't really affect him anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When, like, like, when, a, when a female artist same. is pregnant, it's, like, a, it's kind of like a power move thing. Like, it's em empowering women, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's not how they feel when the, like, WNBA stars get pregnant. Yeah. Can't play. That's another thing, too. Um, you know how there's always... I always see this kind of complaint. And I guess this will jump us in the sports, and I didn't even mean to take that, but it's naturally happened today. Um, there's always this argument that, like, WNBA players, like, make so much less, like, huge amounts less than the NBA players, like, the female versus male. And I think a lot of people, like, granted, like, yeah, I believe in equal pay. Everyone should make yeah. the same money. But a lot of things people don't realize is that not nearly as many people watch yeah. like women's sports it, as they do men's. It's just not a, a lot of money there. There is millions and bil probably billions of dollars there, right? Oh, yeah. But it's not the juggernaut, the massive, huge thing that like male-dominated sports are. Well, see, it's not a male versus female thing. It's just one business versus another business. Exactly, you exactly. Yeah, one is worth billions of dollars it. and it's going to bring in that money consistently and one is worth significantly less because it's not bringing in that money. And I guess like whose fault is that? Yeah. It's no one's fault. Like it's their the It was just the progression of how it happened. Like men's sports came first and then later on it was like, okay, well, these women, these female athletes want to compete on that same level. So they try to make it equal for them and have like a whole league, but it, it's just not as money making from a business standpoint, you know? Yeah. So it's like Yeah, I mean that I think you wrapped it up perfectly. It's it's a business aspect. 
I don't know. And, and, and I, and you can even get mad at it saying that, you know, it shouldn't have been segregated, not segregated, but, uh, like, like separated. divided. Yeah, yeah. From the beginning. Um, cause it should have just been. Well, and then all, it gets into the whole, like, well, men competing versus women. Like, is there an advantage and yeah, stuff like that? And that's that. another yeah. big thing going on yeah. right now with like trans, um, yeah. trans yeah. athletes joining, you know, like someone, that was uh, a male and they transitioned to female. Now they're joining the female athletes and they're breaking all the records and stuff like yeah. that. Cause it's just allowed. Like, how does that happen? What do you do? Like, like, let's say, uh, you have someone that transitioned to female, they go play, uh, baseball and now they're smashing home runs. Well, like, I don't even play female baseball. It's softball. Whatever. Softball. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's baseball. It's a general thing. Yeah. Like, I didn't mean, yeah, it's, it's a bigger deal in like combat sports. Yeah. Like wrestling and stuff like, like that. Like our MMA. Like mm-hmm. if you have a, a man that transitioned into a woman and then is competing in the, the women's MMA, mm. they're beating the fuck out of these. Yeah, women, and now dude. she's like whipping up on everybody yeah. else's ass. But so whenever these women go ahead and, you know, post some new records, is there like an asterisk there or something like that? Like, how do you calibrate that? Yeah. How do you keep track of all that stuff? You just have to, either there's an asterisk or it's like, I know that's a big talk right now and there's a lot of laws trying to be made around it. It's just happening so fast. Just like everything, like things happen and then laws are tried to make to counter what is yeah. happening. I mean, it's progress, but it's yeah. also like, it, it's that fence thing, right? Because like, of course we want to see that, but at the same time, it's sport and sport is, um, it, it, it's, it's developed in traditions and stuff like that. That's what it's about, culture, yeah. uh, traditions, things like that that have been the same for so long. That's why we still use like wooden baseball bats and, you know, uh, like football, like the football hasn't changed so much and yeah. things like that. It's tradition. And so things can be measured for that long. Golf hasn't changed that much. And granted, yeah, technology has increased stuff, but the game itself is a similar. Exactly. Now you're changing it up totally. That's like a very core aspect of the sport. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's why it's divided in the first place. I feel like it's, and a lot of times what I read is it's like the dudes that were just kind of like mid in the other sports. Yeah. And now they're, you know, these women just dominating in the other sports. It's, and it's, it's ridiculous, just, dude. I, it's crazy. I don't know. It's just like, it's one of those things. It's like, where do you fi- where do you fit? Do you want to be on the line of like progression or do you want to be on the line of like, this is stupid because, because obviously this. this. Yeah. And I mean, like both are true. It's yeah. always like anything. We flirt with lines and everything. Anything. Um, big sports news, I guess. Um, there's a very, very, very well, a famous football player. Maybe I'll set this one up for you that has just officially announced his retirement. You want to handle this story? The GOAT. The GOAT. The GOAT? The GOAT Tom Brady. See. Is well, officially let me, done. Let me stop this real quick because I'm, I'm not a sports person. I just have to pay attention because of the podcast. So, I'm going to give this to Kyle. And, uh, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. so he... Uh, Tom Brady. Give him his flowers real quick. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Tell him. So last week he. No, I meant like tell him. <laughs> tell, tell him what? congratulations and oh, shit congrats, like that, man. Tom Brady. Yeah, man. He's gonna watch this. Yeah, Tom, yeah. I'm gonna tag him in. He's gonna watch this. You know, Tom Brady. Go ahead. Yeah. So he uh, announced <laughs> last week that he was gonna retire, and then apparently he was actually up in the air for a few days. Yes, he didn't, I if saw he didn't that. officially hand the Buccaneers his retirement mm-hmm. like letter. But it came out today. That's he's officially done. So congrats to him. Twenty two years. Not gonna be the same. Man is forty four years old. That's like, crazy. Actually, that's crazy. I don't mean to cut you off, but no, no, no. It's fine. Like, go ahead. Th- that's the whole thing. It's like how somebody at that age has mm-hmm. not only played consistently at the same level, but he's actually gotten better. Uh, like as he aged, which yeah. is like completely the opposite trend of what you would expect but yeah i feel like that's uh, one of those things that's only in uh football that people played that for that long like that yeah. old and, well, and then like the average life of just an nfl player is less than like five years oh, really yeah and how it's, long he's been playing now like 11 it's 22 Tw- <laughs> 22 fuck? years yeah it's half i saw this picture of him uh, and it's like this is how long like Tom Brady Brady was around, and it was like the old games. Oh, I like, saw that. Yeah, it's the like old the, NFL the first, games. The first time he was in a uh, NFL, NFL game, and like the most now. recent ones, and it's like super HD versus like Tomb Raider, super pixelated yeah. back in the day, and that's crazy. But man, yeah, continue. I don't mean to interrupt. No, yeah, like so it's it's officially uh, he officially retired from in the NFL, and uh, it's just not going to be the same anymore. And uh, his team lost, right? Or like yeah. didn't make it? You yeah, think that's they, something uh, to do with it? Like. Uh, possibly. Uh, I mean, he's got seven Super Bowls, so it's not like he was trying to prove anything, but, uh, just kind of how the season ended. Yeah. He's like, okay, like I didn't need to, he didn't need to win it on a Super Bowl. 
Yeah, like to prove his, his yeah. worth or anything. Or his, his, to add another one to but his man, legacy. Imagine retiring on your last Super Bowl win. That's, people have done it. Yeah. yeah. That's a big that's a big flex. Um, I'm gonna tell on myself right now. I couldn't even tell you what team he played for. Bro. I don't even know, like I know the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl, right? Shout out Joe. Shout out Joe, Joe Burrow. Burrow. So we'll talk about that in a second. I guess that's a not a hometown hero, somebody I don't know nothing about, but I just know he's from Louisiana and now, you know. He, he's whatever. not from Louisiana. He, he he played for LSU. I don't know. He's not from here though. Sports man, I don't know. He's he's still a he's an adopted son. Adopted of son. Okay. Um so <laughs> Boosie. Boosie's been saying this. He's been really on the Joe Burrow wave recently. He just tweeted this the other day that Joe Burrow will be the next Tom Brady, but more skilled. If he plays 15 to 20 years, he will pass Brady in every category in football. He's I don't a winner. Know, man. What do you think about that? It's hard to say. Like, he's he's in his second year. Uh, but, like, that's the the difference between him and Tom Brady is, like, mm-hmm. Tom Brady literally went, like, in the, one of the last rounds. Like, that was the whole story with him. It's, like, he was literally, a, like, a nobody. He, the only reason he started playing was because the starting quarterback for the Patriots, Drew Bledsoe, got hurt. He got his chance. And... You know, the rest is history. But, like, Burrow went number one. He was the most touted quarterback in, like, college football history. We'll see. I mean, yeah, they're always going to compare quarterbacks. Like, who's the greatest? This and that. But yeah. It's only time will tell. Is that, like, super disrespectful? I mean. I know, like, people love Tom Brady. And, like, I know the name. People are going to compare no matter what. Football is something I don't really carry or pay attention to that much. I pay attention when it's big and it's news and stuff like that. It's just like I got too much other stuff going on. Probably for the next at least couple generations, he's always going to be the one that they're going to compare everybody to. He's like the golden standard. I got you. you It's like LeBron replaced Michael Jordan. Exactly. And now like Zion's like the new up and coming face of the NBA. Yeah. Um, Another person that I don't know if he's from here or not, but plays on Pelicans like Louisiana. Yeah. So that's another cool thing. So we got two people from Louisiana are living in Louisiana are associated with Louisiana that are next two young yeah. rookies that's coming up that are lightning McQueens of the sports world, I guess. <laughs> so uh, I, oh, I found out something interesting yeah, the other day. I saw this statistic that apparently there's only two quarterbacks who won the Heisman, won a national championship and won the Super Bowl. And they were both named Joe, Joe Namath and Joe Montana. You think he's going to be the third? Dude, I don't even know like what the Heisman Trophy is. Bruh. I know it's like they do, it's a trophy and they're doing like this, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the it's the. What is what, explain that? What is the Heisman like, Trophy it's for? It's like the the highest honor you could receive, like as a college football athlete. Oh, see, I don't even know if it was yeah. college or NFL yeah. or dude. I have no clue. Um, other sports news that like like I said, I'm not the biggest uh follower of football but since i've been working throughout all this season and it's like been playoff season and stuff like that i've been paying attention and i've been realizing how close these last few games dude it's are. been insane yeah. like it's like the most amount of overtimes i've ever seen in a yeah. playoff and i hit you the other day um like on the side with the off mic conversation i told you i wanted to talk about this it was like i feel like you know, like, granted, like, I pay attention, but not a lot. So, yeah. like, I kind of watch the games and stuff like that. But, like, I've never seen it go into so many overtimes this much. It'd be so entertaining football. It's I've never super seen this. And I feel like I texted you about this, my theory, that this is all, like, constructed or, like, scripted to be yeah. more interesting football and stuff like that. Because I'm hearing things that they're making weird plays in the last few calls yeah. and all these stuff like that. And this is the first season since, you know, people are coming back to watch the NFL, you know, after all the stuff happened with Cap and a lot of people yeah. stop following I, football. I feel like the NFL, like, has had a lot of negative PR the last few mm-hmm. years, like, at least the last 10 years. Uh, the whole thing with Cap, um, a lot of stuff with they were accused of racism, which I have another thing that I'm going to get into related yeah. to that. Um, we're in the sports bag right yeah. now. Hold on. I forgot to announce that sports bag. And everyone's going to turn it off. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but we're back. We're back. We're going to keep it organic, keep it real. We had to make a little cut for technical difficulties. But we were on... Uh, so, I kind of like lost where we were. So, we're just going to jump into some... Uh, I guess just, man, go back to some more sports topics. Yeah. What were we talking about before? Oh, the whole cap thing. Yeah. And yeah, football. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, we were just talking a bit earlier. Um, I hit Kyle like, with a conversation off mic and off camera. And we were talking about that there was... 
it seemed to me that like with the playoffs and stuff going on right now, there's a bunch of close games that were like super close just, and just lots ridiculous. of overtime and, and very entertaining football. And we were talking about with, I wonder if that was basically uh, constructed is what, I, what I'm what i saying yeah. to make people watch and pay attention more because I feel like this is the first year that people are tuning back in the NFL after COVID, after quarantine, all that shit, after like everyone got mad at Cap and saying they're not watching football anymore. It just seemed like, like they had a lot of negative PR the last few years mm-hmm. and maybe this is just them kind of making up for that and yeah. in constructing these like really good games that are like down to the wire, super entertaining games. Uh do you think there's some validity to that conspiracy? I mean, it's possible. It's an interesting thing to think about because at the end of the day, it's all entertainment. Yeah. And so it's all like trying to retain value or retain audience, viewer time and stuff like that. And the longer you make the game, the closer it is, the more and more people are going to watch. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, also it's playoffs. So it's like the best teams versus the best teams. Exactly. It's so going to be it more competitive. Be, it could be either way. Yeah. But it's just like something to like one of those like thought uh, experiment things, I guess. Uh, and and then now that like sports betting is coming around too, I feel like that yeah, has a lot of things to, uh, to Louisiana. Yeah, and it, it's it's coming. I don't know if it's actually here yet. It actually just started. Just started, yeah, like last week. Cool, because I got a uh, I got a topic we'll jump into that. But I want I just felt like maybe that had something to do with it too. You know, like just, that's another big deal because it's like the more that sports betting as a whole has become more accessible to people. Yeah, and so more people are obviously betting. They're not just having to go to the casino. You can literally just do it from your and phone. Watching the game more, so more money. Kind of stuff. Yeah, like more money is on the table because more people are putting into it, and it's like the house is always going to win. So yeah, how much of that is being controlled by either the NFL or other other groups like that. Crazy bets where people are putting up like 20 bucks and winning like, like thousands, hundreds of thousands. It, of it's insane. Because they're just it, betting on the low odds. Or something. The, the, low, the low odds and they'll parlay bets. Like so you I have don't multiple, explain what a parlay is. I've seen that all the time, but can you like kind of explain what that is? Basically, it's just like multiple bets that you tie together into one mm-hmm. and they all have to hit in order to get the gotcha. payout. Now I've seen uh, Uncut Gems with Adam Yeah, yeah that's, that's actually where the first, because I didn't know much about gambling, yeah. but that's where I first heard that term. That was like, that's a fucking crazy movie. It's another yeah. A24 film that I love. Um, but yeah, so like that's the first time I saw it. So it's just basically what you're saying is everything has to line up perfectly. It could they could be completely unrelated, but it's like if you bet that say this person's going to score a touchdown or this player will have at least this many yards, mm-hmm. it doesn't even have to be the same game or sport or anything. It's like if they all hit and that all, you know, it's like a multiplier. So the more, more more bets you parlay together, the more money you're going to get. I remember parlay what do they have to do with Pirates of the Caribbean? Don't they talk about like, uh, it's like a pirate thing or something <sighs> like that? You know, I've never watched a single Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Really? Never. I forget you sheltered and all that <laughs> stuff. Not sheltered, but fucking. I missed out a lot on that shit. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of Tom Brady, it's another thing Boosie put out recently. Uh, Joe Burrow is the next Tom Brady, but more skilled. If he plays 15 to 20 years, he'll surpass Brady in every category in football. And he it, said that's he's the a whole winner. thing. It's, have to make it that long and yeah. that's what i was saying earlier it's like people get hurt uh they've had quarterbacks that were literally 22 years drafted a long time. super long time and that's professional that's yeah, just nfl yeah. just the nfl because Damn. people get hit so hard they get all these injuries yeah and then it's the like, brain injuries what is yeah, it is uh that? the cte cte stuff yeah and, and so and the the player careers are just getting shorter and shorter um as time goes on because people are just getting hit harder now and so the fact that he's made it that long is just an achievement in itself. So yeah. I don't know if any quarterback's going to make it that long. That's that's insane. So I think he'll be the greatest to ever do it. Who? Joe Tom, Burrow? No, Tom Brady, bro. Yeah. I, I love Joe Burrow, but I mean, he's he, he's the rookie, right? Yeah. He's the Lightning McQueen. He's still the young the he's, young gun. He's the Zion of the yeah. NFL. But I mean, back to the CTE thing. I mean, that's another topic we can jump to. It's just fucking. It, it's it's a big thing. Like there was a whole thing with AB recently, Antonio Brown, like walking yeah. off the field and stuff like that. <laughs> That's and, crazy. Well, like, so there's multiple things from the first time you see it. It's just like him walking off the field and looking crazy. But then like, it's not even know. just that, like he's done a bunch of shit in the last few years that yeah. he's just gone questionable things. But then you have to look at it. It's like, is he mentally okay? Yeah. It could be the CTE shit. You take all those fucking heads, you have these hits to the head, you have these micro concussions and yeah. stuff like that. It's hard to think that you're in the right mindset to, Act right. I mean, yeah. on top of that, you've got money involved. You've got fame. You've got it's a lot of stuff, different layers. Pressure. There's so much shit. And the NFL like tries to argue that 
CTEs aren't a thing. Because mental health is so important right now, and it's such a huge topic, and, and there's this potential sport that's damaging people's brains. Yeah. And, and it's, it's definitely like it's definitely real. It, it definitely brought to the light. And what does CTE brought to the light stand for? Yeah, I'm going to look it up while you talk I about it. can't say I know, bro. It's, but what you were saying, though? It's, it's brought definitely to light. been more like because of all the research that has been done in recent years and yeah. the findings have showed. And on top of all these like examples, like you said, Antonio Brown, the whole thing with uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, like, like yeah. he had shown that he had CTE when, uh, and then he, you know, he killed those two people, and he had a lot of suicidal issues. Yeah, and I, I mean, then like I said, and you wrap the fame and the money and the exactly, pressure and all exactly. that shit around that. It's a fucking cocktail of craziness. But CTNE stands for a chronic traumatic. Um, I do not ence- encephalopathy whatever yeah and that's the whole thing I remember like when i used to look up definitions back in the day <laughs> like on the original episode it's like you got to look up a definition yeah. for the definition i see why they call it cte yeah um it's a term used to describe brain degeneration likely caused by repeated head trauma um so cte the problem is that it's only diagnosed um at the time of uh autopsy when people yeah, study you have sections to, like, of the brain. open up their brain and see right it's not something you can necessarily see um you know with a, a, a mri a scan or yeah. a cat scan or shit like that and it's like supposedly like this rare disorder that we still don't really understand hopefully the technology develops to be able to diagnose though like people while they're still in their careers and stuff yeah you know speaking of uh fucking betting i just got a random text messages from FanDuel sportsbook <laughs> the sportsbook um telling me to set up an account and stuff like that and i've never tried to bet but i actually got a cool article on it um my friend uh my homie actually abigail shout out to abigail wrote this uh news article for klfy um so she's basically in this article talking about um how like sports betting is going to affect louisiana and stuff like that uh so it's she this was posted uh four days ago now but uh, today marks the day mobile sports betting officially goes live in Louisiana after in-person sports betting begin October 31st. Hi. Hi. We have an intruder on the podcast, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so basically the bulk of the money from the state revenue uh, generated by sports betting will go to early childhood education, local governments, and mental health wellnesses. And um, she has uh, a couple like tax breakdowns and stuff like that of what's going to go into where. But basically, from what I'm reading, um, basically in two months of sports betting already in Louisiana, uh, $39.5 million were wagered. Damn. And and that's just what was wagered. But yeah. a certain percentage of that of taxes, um, it, it's all regulated. And, you know, of course, like the government wants to cut. And that's something you kind of just have to pay into with yeah. it being allowed. I mean, it's profitable. Uh, but there's a certain percentage breakdowns and, and stuff like that. Um, and I'll link that all in. But basically, she's typing that, uh, you know, like it's it's all going to be good. It's like what we talk about when, you know, like what's going to happen when marijuana is legalized here and stuff like that. And people are scared that they don't know what to do with the money. But they've already got plans for this. They uh, will have no problem finding places for the money. Yeah, I, guarantee I mean, this that. is going to be a big thing. I mean, like I said, there's a breakdown of percentages right now. Um, so 2% or $500,000, or uh, whichever is greater, goes to Behavioral Health and Wellness Fund. 2% not to exceed 500000 will be credited to Disability Affairs Trust Fund. 2.5% will go to the Sports Wagering uh, Purse Supplement Fund. Uh, 10% will go to Sports Wagering Local Allocation Fund. 25% not exceeding tw- $20 million will go towards the Louisiana Early Childhood Education Fund. So it's like broken down in a lot yeah. of important things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, that, and that's, that's good for the state. Like uh, the fact that they're actually going to get a good, uh, at least a portion of that that's going to things that will benefit people directly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the thing. It's like we talk about where we're going to get all this money from to, you know, take care of, of, of a lot of things and, and fix these things. Now, granted, this isn't necessarily going to fix infrastructure and stuff like that, which I think is a huge problem. One of the biggest Major. things in Louisiana, but it's going to benefit other things. And that's just kind of like this is the first step. You know, like, yeah. what do you do? And I feel like when you take money from something, you kind of have to put it back into something associated with it. 
or something yeah. like that. You yeah. know what you I'm gotta, saying? You got to invest back into what's actually giving you that. Money. Right. Cause you have to allow that infrastructure and stuff like that. And it all has to be accounted for. And it's just a big process. Um, so I guess, yeah, we pretty much covered sports, man. So we'll, yeah. um, there's big podcast news right now. Yeah. Um, so this is a podcast I don't really watch. I know this is like the typical podcast that everyone loves. And, and back in the day, I used to watch a lot of it, but it's just kind of like same thing over and over again. And that's not me, uh, shitting on them. I just like, I like more like just different things, man, different viewpoints, artsy viewpoints, all these different, different sources. This is the podcast for the masses. Kind. This is the podcast. I make podcasts pop, but Joe Rogan right now, um, is in some, not hot water or anything like that, but trying to cancel him. There's, okay, well, so I guess we can go multiple places with this conversation. So I'll let you cover that one in a second. But uh, Joe Rogan and Neil Young on Spotify. So uh, basically, Neil Young, are, he's a writer and uh, uh, an artist. As a, uh, he's an older one. Like yeah. Our parents know more about him than us. And he's probably more well known for the songs he wrote than what he actually performed. Um, he basically was saying, he was walk, talked to Spotify saying that I'm tired of all this misinformation that Joe Rogan's putting out. Um, that on my same platform that y'all are hosting me. So y'all either take him off or y'all take me off. And instantly they were like, no, nah. I'm like, yeah, we're going to, that's our cash cow. Like we just paid him a hundred million dollars. Yeah. They just, he just signed a huge contract. So with them, so by Neil Young. But the weird thing is that like, I've heard people talk about this too, that there's a lot of other artists on Spotify, like R Kelly yeah, and stuff like that. Like, that are other big problems, but this is where Neil Young like decided to tackle it. But like the thing is, Joe Rogan is a podcast just like this one. Like you just talk, you're going to talk to different people with different opinions, different things like that. Everyone's just going to say stuff in the moment. It's it's hard to be, this is basically, you know, we have the power of editing, but at the same time, like some of the stuff you say is relevant for only a few minutes, only yeah. a few, you know, you can say one thing's right one day and then CDC says something's wrong the next day. That's another thing like CDC, Fox, everyone else has put out wrong information too because yeah. we're learning Everybody's as we're going. Been in that. Yeah. And this is not me defending him. This is just me saying that like, why, like why you pick that battle and you're making your fans have a harder time to stream your music, which relates to less income for you. You're shooting yourself in the foot at that point. Yeah. Like. yeah it just seems silly. But, I mean, also, there's another thing going around, and you were saying that, like, again, he's trying to be canceled for what now? I got some, I got a, a article right here. Um, this is from NPR. Joe Rogan has responded to the Spotify uh, protest over his podcast. And if you're on Instagram, Joe Rogan said that he was only seeking to have conversations on the podcast with people who have differing opinions i'm not trying to promote misinformation i'm not trying to be controversial rogan said i've never tried to do anything with his podcast other than just talk to people and I'll that's give, i'll give him that like he i've listened to his podcast you know a lot before mm-hmm. and he does have a lot of different guests who like you said have different opinions and he's always been in the narrative where it's like you can't just have one side to everything you know he's had uh, conservative people, liberal mm-hmm. people, people from this industry and this industry. Yeah. And you're going to have different opinions. And it's just trying to like have conversations with different people. And he's you like, know? for that's the most part, it seems he's like about. he's fairly neutral and stuff like that. He's just providing opinions. And that's what's kind of cool about it is you're providing a platform or people of all different varying types to come yeah. and talk. When you normally tune into something, you have a fixed point of view, right? Everything yeah. you watch is trying to persuade you a certain way, where the Instagram, social media, everything, all the algorithms are trying to like direct you in a certain way. And then he's kind of got this thing that's just interviewing interesting people. And and that's kind of how like in the real world things really operate. It's gives and takes. Yeah. I don't think anyone's like extreme all the way left or extreme all the way right. You, you On social them. media you have people that portray themselves that but yeah. You can't think that everything this way is right and, then and everything of, this way is wrong. A lot of things that people will just listen to or like certain news channels they'll yeah. tune into just to reaffirm their own biases. Mm-hmm. You know, in something like this, you're having different people, like you said, with different opinions. So you're not just sticking to one side of that. You're kind of different all over the yeah. place. And that's the thing is it's all algorithm based depending on what you see. And the problem is everybody is living in their own algorithm. Yeah. Everyone's own algorithm is their reality. That's what you, it's crazy to think about. Everyone else, you and me, have totally different algorithms. You know, like everyone has their own viewpoint. It's like goggles, the way you see things. It's like filters. And we all have a different 
way of what news is portrayed to us based on what our interest is decided by these tech companies and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, man. That's, uh, that's just more of a thing that, I mean, I feel like we talk about the algorithm every episode, but it's one of those it's things. Important. That's, it's only been around with the internet the last few years. It's uh, probably been around forever, but like this is just people are starting I, to I catch think, on. Now. I think the last probably 15 years or so, I think it's especially been like pushed. And I think we were, we had an off camera, uh, off camera conversation about that like last week mm-hmm. about how like there's this theory that all of the internet is just fake and it's just I, uh, AI traffic that's yeah. pushing, pushing at everything. And like nothing's really happening. Yeah. Like it's all, it's not really there. Like I might it's have just, missed that conversation. I feel like we, I don't remember if you were there. Uh, we talked about it in the Discord, but like shout out the boys chat. Yeah. Bon clan. Um, (laughs) basically all the tech companies and governments are using the internet to persuade public opinion by using the algorithm and all the stuff that you see on the new on Twitter, or if it's like viral tweets or viral Mm -hmm. news stories, it's just recycled by these AI bots that are just kind of feeding into it. Yeah. That's why you listen to the Ann Lane podcast and let me be in charge of your algorithm because this podcast is based off of my algorithms, basically. It is crazy to see when I flip back and forth between my two, like I run two Instagrams, my personal one and then one for the podcast. Like what's on the podcast one is totally different than what's on my personal one. You know, I get on my my personal one and it's uh, it's it's all shoe stuff. It's all like anime girls. It's like <laughs> model like people. It's fashion. It's it's biking. It's it's all this technology stuff I'm interested in. And then you get on like I get on mine, like the podcast one. And it's a lot of news based stuff and, and stuff like that. And so it, it's very interesting to see. And it's kind of like a social experiment in itself. Now, granted, I know some of the stuff overlaps. It's still connected to the same phone, the same yeah. network, it, it, the same IP. It knows it's me probably, but it is some of the things that are different. And I think that's an interesting thing. We should like, I don't know, like one day people should just look through other people's phones and see like maybe we do uh-huh. it that's gonna cause some issues no i'm not talking about like digging it you know what i'm saying yeah it's always the thing if you're looking for a problem you're gonna find that yeah. i hate that shit um but i'm just saying like see other people's like realities yeah. and stuff like that yeah because our whole reality is literally just built through what our phone what we see on our phone yeah our phones are like a portal into it, it's it's one of those things where it's like the portal into what we believe in what we see, how we feel, all these things. It's like everything encompassed in one. It's like a diary. Our phones are our diary. Oh, now, yeah. If you think about it. You ever had a diary? Never. No. I thought about starting one, man. It would have been cool to document uh, everything from, you know, just COVID, whatnot, everything's going around. But I guess that's quarantine and whatnot when all that was happening. But I guess that's what the podcast is. It, that, I've heard that is kind of a healthy habit, though. Like really? when you document stuff and you kind of – it allows you to process things differently. Mm-hmm. Like when you see it written out on paper, um, I've heard it helps a lot of people. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like writing shit down, putting it on paper makes it real, makes it scary, but it also kind of gets it out of your way. gets it out of your mind, especially yeah. if someone like me is like fucking struggles with ADD and shit. It's just like an overwhelming. You ever seen Jimmy Neutron? Yeah. You know, when he had like a brain blast, oh, yeah. and he would like think shit my whole life's like a fucking brain blast, <laughs> but not in a good way. Um, so we'll get off that for a little bit. We'll just talk into some random news around the world. This is for you. This is from Colombia. Uh, That's, you know, yeah, because you're Colombian or whatever. Okay. <laughs> um, this is kind of relates to the last time we were talking about drug trafficking and El Chapo and stuff like yeah. that. So two or 20,000 coconuts That's filled insane. with liquid cocaine seized by, uh, Colombian officials. How did they find that? <sighs> Like, how, how would you I even know. know to look? That's such a good move, though. That reminds me, like, you know when people go on cruises and they take mouthwash and they put, like, vodka in the mouthwash, yeah, yeah. dye it yeah. a little blue and stuff like that, and then it's alcohol, so you can't really tell the difference because it is alcohol content anyway in mouthwash. That's why they don't let, I, when I went on a cruise, they wouldn't let you bring anything that wasn't sealed. Yeah. They kind of, you know, that's their way of uh, minimizing that, but that's crazy. One of the comments on the story says more like, Coconuts, like cocaine. There That's you what go. you wanted me to hit. You <laughs> telling me to hit that thing more early. Um, I saw this other news article too. Like, well, like I said, we'll just jump across some more random news articles. Um, I think it's Malaysia. Let me just double check 
to make this short because I'm vaping right now. It's reminding me of that. And I'm going to stop very soon. I need to stop smoking because I read recently that it causes cavities and I don't want cavities. Oh, no. Um, that I think it's Malaysia. Let's just say that uh, is banning smoking for people um, born after 2005 or they're trying to like ban cigarettes like and stuff forever? like that. Forever? forever like what? anyone born after 2005 like they don't want them to like have even access if you're to it. after a certain age yeah just That's if you were insane. born after 2005 they don't want people smoking cigarettes anymore and it makes sense because like it's another one of those big industries that are wrapped up and just controlled by money and greed oh, yeah. and all this shit and so they're like one of those products that kill people but yeah we still fucking do it yeah because it's addicting i mean supposedly it's one of those things where like nicotine um you know is naturally created in our body and so the reason it's so addicting is when you start vaping and smoking and stuff like that, your your brain has stopped making that chemical. You're How? taking more into your body. So it, your brain has to stop trying. So when you well, stop vaping, your brain needs that. So it wants it, wants it, wants it. And that's why they withdraw so hard. It wasn't it. Right, yeah. exactly. What, what is that used for? Like why, why does their body produce it? It's just another stimulant from my understanding. Same thing like your body produces serotonin and all these things. Oh, yeah. And that's what one of the things that like, so your brain is like this chemical plant from my understanding. And it just produces all these chemicals alongside with doing um, these connections and, you know, neurons and all that shit. But that's one of the things with, you know, ADD is like basically your brain doesn't produce the necessary chemicals needed to retain focus and a retention of information and shit like that. Um, and so when you take medication, it's just different chemicals coming in your body to address those things, to fix those things so. and adjust those things. And that's what you're doing with nicotine. You're inhaling it. Yeah. That's what happens with... Um with steroids when people take steroids like mm. uh either for sports or whatever like yeah. for bodybuilders like a, a testosterone is a steroid and when people inject that your body shuts off their natural production of it so whenever they get off of it, it their whole like endocrine system just completely shuts down and, and then you get erectile dysfunction exactly you can't get yeah. it up same thing that's tragic i better quit doing steroids <laughs> i'll lie you better do whatever the <laughs> fuck you want maybe i'll get on some steroids and i'll be super jacked when yeah. we get back in the gym when the gym's open again a new gym. New gym. We new got gym a new by the house. We've been waiting on. We've been waiting on it for about two or three months now. Oh, yeah. Um so all the worldwide news, uh Black History Month officially yep. started today. Uh we're recording on Tuesday. That's super big news. And that kind of goes back into the you know, NFL and stuff like that. Whenever like it's all rooted in a bunch of racist shit. Like yeah. people were mad about, you know, the cap shit and what was going on. They were saying, uh, I don't know, man, it's, it's they all had, over the place. They had and speaking of because it was today, it mm -hmm. was kind of a big deal, especially uh Brian Flores. He was a uh, he still is a he's a coach for the Miami Del Miami Dolphins. Uh, he actually sued the NFL because he was just, allegedly saying that he was denied certain jobs because he was a black man. Mm -hmm. um, he's a black man. And among some other things, he had like text messages through from owners and stuff, um, you know, kind of backing up his lawsuit. So it's interesting to see how that's going to play out too, how that ties into that whole issue. Yeah. I mean, it's just like everywhere you go, people just have these like fucked up shit over it. Just what? Like it's just, systematic racism that's just yeah. taught to people and people say it's not true and not all this shit and it's just literally how you're taught and raised um here's another article this is coming from the shade room um so at least 13 hbcus started the day off today the first day of black history month with bomb threats damn so like people were just calling them in like from outside and shit like that just to cause chaos 13 at least 13 that's not a coincidence. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like, everything's okay now, apparently, the article is saying. Um, but they had to, police had to come in and all these places and, you know, shelter in places. That's traumatic. I mean, yeah. a bomb threat is a scary thing. And, I mean, like, for someone's sick joke, like, to just it's fucking literally just a that, troll. Like, it's, it's the worst troll, too. It's a fucking racist yeah. troll. Like, the first day. You know, Man. You, 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 you go into school. And then it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter what school it happened at, but like imagine that you arrive on campus in a bomb threat after like everything that's kind of like and been the, happening recently. Yeah, and like you have to take them seriously, even though it's like it's probably nothing, but like yeah. you have to take it seriously because of how much it is. Today, the world, you know? I mean, like the world. There's a lot of stuff going on overseas right now that like, I won't really get into because, like, granted, I'm not the most educated. But like with Ukraine and Malaysia and a lot of shit that's going on over there now, mm -hmm. and. um 
Was yeah. it like Russia is like invading them or something? And, and see, this is like, yeah, but I don't really want to get into it that's, too that's much. That's literally like all the extent of it that yeah, I know too. But I mean, like the world's kind of up in the air right now. Um, what is that? All right, so we're back. No cuts were made again. Nope. Uh, that's I guess, the last one. Yeah, adult breastfeeding, man. That's crazy. Dude, that is... <sighs> it's not crazy. I'm not here to kink shame I, I, or like culture shame. So, okay. It's wild. Is it, that's an actual thing like people will do or it's yeah. just like... Right. That's just like a kink that they will pour in search. I just it. read this whole thing talking about athletes consuming breast that milk for insane. stuff. That is insane. Why do they think that that's going to help It's different people? cultures, man. Different cultures eat dogs different cultures praise animals do these all these different things man different cultures it's, it's hard to understand a lot of different yeah. cultural things yeah um as far as uh world news uh we've also got uh pfizer vaccines are coming very shortly covid shit covid shit covid shit every episode um they're coming to young children very soon uh that's been a thing announced very recently um, a new Belgian law. We kind of talked about like the four day weekend last time and yeah. some overseas. Uh, grants certain workers the right to disconnect after hours, meaning mm. that like, um, starting Tuesday, uh, so today, thousands of federal city servants in Belgium will no longer have to answer phone calls, emails, or text messages from their bosses outside of working hours, which is not something I necessarily have to deal with unless, like, you know, somebody would call me in to come into work yeah. or something like that. But then you wouldn't even have different. to, yeah, imagine that. Like, you wouldn't even have to worry about coming in to work. A lot of people have to bring their work home in that sense. Yeah. Like they're, or, well, especially they're on call now or something like that. Uh, on call is, is yeah. stressful. You know, you can't enjoy yourself. I had, a, I had a job that I used to be on call for and that I hated that shit. Yeah, it was, I'm sure it's worth it, though. Like, the pay is probably a little bit better and stuff yeah, like that. Only if you actually have to go do something. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just so inconvenient, though, you know? Yeah. It and, always happens at the, the worst times. Mm-hmm. I guess if I got paid, like, and I didn't have to go anywhere, that'd be, yeah. like, a legit situation. Um South Africa, this is a new one. Uh, this was another one from NPR. South Africa scrapped so many COVID regulations. Uh, cities, uh, because of cities of high levels of population immunity, basically a herd immunity. Um, so, but from now on, anyone without symptoms can continue to live life as normal. Anyone who comes into contact with COVID positive, positive person and who has no symptoms can go back to normal, no testing, no isolation. Um, I guess they're just kind of trying to achieve more yeah. herd immunity and just saying that it's kind of the point over there where they're just kind of done trying with it all. And apparently like something they're doing is working. Mm. Um, I feel like every country has gotten COVID right except us. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, man. What's the, what's the fucking right way to, to deal with yeah. something we've never dealt with before? It's always easy to look at it in hindsight, you know, after yeah. it happened and shit like that. But while it's happening, it's it's kind of hard to just. Uh, it's such a look very at. it's a very dynamic situation that has changed a lot in the last two years. So yeah, it's just one of those things, man. As as we continue to live through it, we'll learn more about it. But I guess that's all for worldwide news. Um, we've got some local news apparently stirring hmm. up. I don't really. Uh, I haven't been following it. I've been hearing rumors about it. Apparently, Kyle knows a little bit more about it than me. And so I'm gonna, I, I don't even know that much. I, it's we have to talk about it though. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk a little bit about it. So go ahead with it, man. It's just it's Lafayette Facebook gossip. That's literally all it is, man. Like so, this woman. I'm I'm not even gonna say her name, but apparently this they gonna know who you're talking about. Yeah, uh, this local businesswoman who has multiple like private businesses in mm-hmm. Lafayette, uh, like babysitting. I think she does photography and uh, a few other things. Um, they call her the Lafayette scammer, basically, mm. because people, this one in particular situation, this woman, she was running, okay, so she's running a daycare in her house. Mm. And this person went to the house to, like, pick up her kid or check on her kid or something. And, like, she wasn't even in the room watching the kids. The kids were just by themselves. They were, like, running around screaming, like, like they hadn't been watched in, a, like, a while, like, several hours. And she just locked herself in the room. Uh Kind of give a, a, I guess, a, a whole generalization of what this woman does and who she yeah. is, I guess. Well, what do they call it? Scam or something? Some, scam, uh, scamagami? Scamagami. Yeah, yeah that's so, it. Because it ties into like Howard. I think it's, I forgot what her last name is. It's Edam- Edamame. Edagame. I don't think it's Edamame, <laughs> but that's funny. Um, 
Well, apparently once that story came out, a bunch of other people were talking about some of her other businesses and like problems that they had with mm. them. Like, uh, so she had like a photography. Yeah. Like some they photographer care. stuff didn't come out right. And she didn't want to refund them some money. And, yeah. I uh, saw that she was going people. live with like a bunch of groups from Lafayette in this uh, Facebook group, just like trying to defend herself. And everyone was like, just, it was just, just a bunch of it. shit building up. I don't know. Was that uh was any exposure is good exposure? Yeah, I don't know about that. Not in this case. <laughs> so like I said, I don't really I'm sure like more shit will come out and more people will hear about oh, it, yeah. but it's just uh a little bit of local news, I guess. Facebook messy, bro. Facebook is it's, a is a different place, man, for a different type of people. You know what it is, and it's it goes back to the algorithms, man. Facebook yeah. algorithm shows you different things. It's so different. Um this is just different. Oh look, what's that? What? That one at the top. This one right here? No. Right there. Let's see. Um Oh, it's gonna be on TikTok. It's gonna be on TikTok. Let's see. Our producer, our new producer, uh Golden House Entertainment is currently giving me a live coverage of the event going on right now. We're putting her on the spot. It's local news as it's happening. Local news as it's happening. Uh so I guess it's making more like news than just around yeah. the local area. I guess people like on TikTok are hearing about it and talking about it and covering it. So it's gonna be pretty uh it's gonna be a, a TikTok you Pretty so. big out there. I'm gonna try and see if I can get her on the podcast and talk to her about it. What's still going on? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not gonna mess with that stuff. That seems like a problem waiting to happen. But that'd be funny. That'd be a good ass uh some clickbait shit going like on. Some gotcha journalism. Yeah, gotcha journalism. Some vice shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. This is uh, and a bottle of wine. Uh, apparently, they are pretty big uh, story, or they're pretty big podcast. I think oh. and they have over three hundred k followers. I heard about it from one hundred seven nine too. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm reading from Delaney that one hundred seven nine is also covering the story. So I guess it's like big news out here, and yeah. I just kind of missed it. Like I was hearing people talk about a gossip about it at work, but my brain was so wrapped up. Around I, I never saw the actual shit. story. I had to have three different people explain it. To yeah, me. it was just. I saw all the subtweets about it. I was like, yeah. well, what's going on? Like, what the hell? Yeah, and I've gotten everything I know about it from secondhand sources yeah. and stuff like that. Um, so now this is the third-hand source, I guess. It's an evolving story that we're going to have more on, info on next, next week. time. Yeah, next yeah. week we come in, um, Scamagami is going to be sitting across from us, <laughs> and we'll talk to her about it. <laughs> no, just kidding. But, um, yeah, man, I, I, it seems like one of those things is, like, you keep perpetuating, you know, Things you screw over wrong people wrong, wrong amount of times. Yeah. Joe Rogan, same thing. You know, yeah. you piss the wrong people off or you say, the, you know what I'm saying? In her mind, she might be totally right, but it seems like she was doing some fucked up shit, neglecting a child and stuff like that. Um, I guess uh, we've been going for kind of a bit. I don't know um, how long we've been going for. It doesn't matter. We, the, we've made these cuts the and stuff like this. Issues, we'll wrap this up soon. I had these off-camera mic conversations with you recently. Um, I'm going to expose Kyle for a minute, I guess, before we oh, wrap this bro. up. Um, Kyle recently told me that he thought you could actually feel five gum. <laughs> <laughs> like the old commercials. Like, why did you think that? Go ahead and say that. It's good marketing. The old <laughs> commercials where it was like how it feels to chew five gum. Yeah. So you were a little cult kid watching yep. the TV and like actually thinking you could feel something from it. Yep. Remember the York peppermint patty commercials where they'd eat them and they'd get Those goosebumps and stuff like that. Those are disgusting. You don't like the goosebump mm -hmm. commercials? I feel like that's cringe for us. Like a certain type of that's got to be one of those like phobias, like tripophobia or some mm -hmm. shit like that. Is that why you thought that? Maybe. Uh, not having any experience in that. Like I guess I thought as as a kid, like. It's like, oh, that, that must be what drugs feel like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the equivalent of it. <laughs> he thought so. you could experience something. No, but I was laughing the other day because I had some like gaming gum or something. I went to GameStop to pick uh, something up. Like I never go there, but like there was something coming out or some random shit I picked up and I saw it there and I picked it up and it's supposed to have like vitamins and stuff oh, like that. Isn't it? It's like a, their G Fuel uh, yeah, gum Yeah, G Fuel or something. gum. But you, you also thought that El Pollo Loco wasn't a real restaurant in Lafayette and you thought that it was the chicken joint from Breaking Bad. Look, I got it mixed up. Okay, I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> what is it? What's the one from uh, Pollo Hermanos? Is yeah, what's on there. Yeah, the chicken joint. What's his name on there? Um, oh boy, not Gus Saul. Frank. Gus. Gus, Frank. Gus. That's some crazy shit going on in there. Yeah. He's pretending to be like a little poor man, and then 
He's driving this beat up ass car. Man, Breaking Bad was really good. That's probably one of my favorite shows. Really, of all time. really, like, really good. It's such a good show. Uh, I mean, I don't think anything's really like kind of come close to it again. No. You know, Euphoria is pretty good. It's been back. Um, I watched the first episode of uh, the new season last night. Yeah. It's good, man. It's yeah. good. I got to get back into it. Um, I've been also, I watched a little bit of Yellow Jackets. And okay. it's basically, it's a pretty good series. Uh, it's like these kids that's on the stranded island. And it's kind of Lost-esque, but not is, with is the Is it crazy. like a reality show? Or it's like no, 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 no. Like it's, a, it's, a, it's like an actual show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it kind of got crazy in the last one where they like started to take some crazy-ass mushrooms. And they lost me on the last episode. Sure. But I think it's got some good... Um, some good watch time. You know, you can check it out. Um, I think Ozark. On? Ah, fuck what it is. It's HBO Max or Hulu. I don't remember. I got all of them. You know so what else like, I just discovered what? the other day? HBO Max uh-huh. is HBO and Cinemax combined. Really? It's like the. the I just thought it was HBO that. that you could watch titties and stuff. Yeah, on. it's like HBO to the max. To the max. Uh, but it's actually just those two brands combined. And that's weird. That's weird. Anything else you've been watching them lately? Been catching your eye? Uh, I mean, the only show I've been really watching right now is like uh, I'm kind of late to it, but like I'm in the middle of watching Game of Thrones. Oh, I still uh, never watched it. It's, it's really good. That's a cool way to watch it though. Like after everyone's watched it, it's died out. It's all there to be available, yeah. and you can just kind of form your own opinion on the it. The only thing with that is though, it's I've already accidentally read several spoilers that I didn't want to know, and that I just discovered mm-hmm. by accident. So that's the only thing, but yeah. Yeah. Man, having Delaney is here is nice. She just reminded me Jackass is coming out this Friday. I know that's okay. going to be a big ass like movie coming out. <laughs> no pun intended. You know, big ass Jackass. Yeah. Whatever. That was corny. Um, <laughs> but it's going to be a big ass movie. It's crazy to see like Johnny Knoxville and all these guys like old now. Um, but I think Tyler Creator's in this and Jasper, a bunch of people from like Odd Future. Okay. Uh, a bunch of those old guys from it are, are back in it. And that's it awesome. looks like pretty entertaining. That's one of those like humors that's like, it's just that slapstick comedy that's yeah. funny, but they're, they're like, not too safe with it. They're funny with it. It's it's one of those humors that are just really enjoyable. Um, beyond that, I think that's, oh, dude, I still haven't watched Spider Man yet. What? Yeah um oh, i still you, you late to that bro. no i still haven't watched it but you read any spoilers no 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 no. i've been pretty good about i'm um, sorry i'm watching a bunch of shit at one time begin hacking in like wade um i have not watched any spoilers yet i know they're all three in there that's like the From, worst kept secret don't, ever yes but don't tell them anything i'm gonna wa- <laughs> I'm going to watch it soon, and I'm going to give my review of it and spoil it to everyone that didn't watch it. Because if you didn't watch it yet and you're an idiot like me, I don't know what to tell you. But I need to watch it. It's so good. I, I need it's to watch very it. good. And I know you watched like all the ones like, coming up to it recently. Yeah. Like, like we just watch binged it. all of them that they had out before just yeah. to kind of catch myself up. Because I hadn't seen a few in several years. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a really good like way to just kind of end like Tom Holland's trilogy on that uh like his spider-man hey don't don't um, say too much that's all that's, don't all, say that's too all i'm much. saying because i really 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 want to watch it that's one of my things i used to really like going to the movies by myself and i know it's like kind of a weird ass thing to do yeah. with certain people but i'm one of those people that just like i love to sit there and watch it i wish it came out like on uh amazon or prime or something i could rent it yeah but it's it's not there yet that's the way a lot of the like the new movies like uh the matrix came out on, it was yeah. on hbo for a while like the same time it was in theaters that I think that's going to be the new way for like a lot of. But uh, then, what does that do, you know, to movie theaters? It shuts them down. There's a big profit yeah, and shit behind that. It's it's the I think what it is. It's like the production companies kind of splitting up their profits, like because not everybody's going to want to go to the theaters, especially with like COVID the last couple of years. That theater business was like completely non-existent, and I think it probably I'd imagine it's cheaper for them. Yeah, if they just put it on the streaming service that they own already too. So they're still getting money from that, but it's just the theater's not getting as enough. There's been a, uh, I don't know, there was this video going around, I remember recently, there was this, uh, I guess it was like this budget uh, movie theater, almost like the one in Abbeville. Oh, I don't know yeah. if you've ever been to that one, but uh, they were streaming Netflix movies in what? the theater. And like something happened and like it, it logged out and they were having stream issues and they had to log back in and like everyone what? could see it. They were just streaming it. That's crazy. Yeah, that's funny though. Um, I remember when I was a kid, the movie Spirit, you know that movie? 
It was the horse thing? The horse. You know, that actually is a weird that's fucking thing. That's one of thing. favorite movies. I'm going to put her on blast by that. Matsu put her on blast because there's this weird obsession where people are attracted to the fucking horse. Oh, God. Like, a lot of I've, people are sexually attracted I've to the horse. I've heard of that. I've heard of, like, that's people fucking having weird. their sexual way to And, and Nikki told me that movie. recently. I didn't know. I don't understand that. But I've also heard people being, like, sexually attracted to Bambi and shit like that. Oh, what? Yeah, I don't know. That's weird as fuck. But, um... Not like, just the animals, but, like... I've seen a bunch of stuff like either on Twitter or TikTok where people talking about when they were kids, like their sexual awakening came from like just cartoon movies. And yeah, shit. Bro, like, like Shigo was bad for yeah. Kim Possible. Kim Possible was bad. Like the Wings Club when I was a kid, bad. I, I'm going to tell you mine, that girl from Atlantis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. 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 That's a beautiful I woman. Was... Her or the girl from uh, uh, Rodel Dorado. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually saw that for the first time really? uh, the other day. Yeah, I can see why. Which one? You have to pick one. <laughs> what you mean? The girl from Atlantis? Oh, that was mine. Like, I know. I watched okay. that several times as a kid, but like the one, now the Rotel Dorado, I just saw recently. Who's better? Oh, my girl, bro. Yeah? Hands down. Hands yeah. down. Um, Atlantis, even like the main character, what's his name? Milo. I know a lot of yeah. people like think he's like that uh, attractive, like archaeological, like the nerdy, kid, nerdy the, yeah. attractive, all this stuff. Um, Delaney just sent me more stuff. I actually want to talk about this. I forgot too. Uh, Groundhog Day is tomorrow. Oh, Today yeah. or tomorrow? I forgot what it what is. It's tomorrow. So, what's your prediction? So, like, the whole thing is like the groundhog comes out. What happens? He apparently, like, if he sees his shadow, mm-hmm. it's six more weeks of winter. Yeah. And then if he doesn't, it's uh, early spring. Gotcha. I hope that's right. I, before but we I get into anything, I remember there was this, um, there was like the groundhog died a few years ago. It bit the no, dude. No, it just he just died. No, like I remember, maybe it's new one again. Of them just died. It was like the one in New York, which is I forgot his name, but it's yeah. like supposedly the famous one. He just died like yesterday oh, or today. Shit. Well, what's his name? I don't remember. Let's see you if have we to can look, look up, up his name real quick. Um, look it up on your phone real quick so we can pay our respects to him. But um, a few years ago, I remember there was this. There was one another famous one. It bit the dude. Like the one they used, I guess, and he dropped it and it fell on its head. Oh, and like a few days later, it died. Um, but I guess they all got to die. Um, it's kind of like the White House every year pardons a turkey. Like they just won't kill oh, a turkey. Yeah. That's just some weird shit. Milltown Mel. Milltown Mel. Yeah. Well, rest in peace, Milltown Well. All you right, will Pete. be appreciated. Um, I don't know how that started. Um, Groundhog Day. But it was, I think it was like some kind of. Some pagan shit, bro. Sound like bro, some. Don't get me on that because I'm literally everything is fucking related to pagan shit, and people don't even know, like everything. Is Facebook? That's not what I mean, but like <laughs> just like, a lot of traditions that we think of as yeah. like completely normal. Christmas, Halloween, all that shit, right? Every uh, even like wearing like wedding rings. Yeah, it's a pagan. Like, it has to do with like a Greek thing. Like, uh, yeah. like there's a whole story behind it, but like. A lot of things that we don't even would tie, we wouldn't even think to tie to that. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, just all have pagan origins. We're gonna have a, crazy. Whole, a pagan podcast one day. Yeah, well, is that a, is that it. offensive? No, it doesn't offend me. <laughs> it might <laughs> I guess some other people. <laughs> like I always say, look, if it's offensive, I'm sorry, and if it's not, I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry, or I don't care. Whatever. It's one of those things. that's just like I don't know a lot of shit, man. It's just you talk about so much shit, you're gonna say some offensive oh, shit. Yeah. But what's your predictions for for it? I think it's it. Look, we had a late ass winter. Yeah, it was cold as fuck recently, and like the first half of winter, it was hot. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a it's long gonna, it's one. I think pushed back a little bit, so it's I think it's gonna be cold for a little while. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and if we're wrong, we're wrong. I feel like I want to disagree with you just to have some <laughs> to have a different yeah. opinion. Okay, so look back to that. Uh, we'll wrap it all back up full circle. Let's go back into sports for a little bit. Who's in the Super Bowl this year? So it's going to be the Chiefs and the Rams, and the Rams are actually playing in their home stadium. Yeah. So it, it's in LA. Who's, what's, the, what's the underdog pick? <sighs> I'll, t- I'll tell you my pick. It's going to be it's gonna be the Bengals. Bengals? I want Joe Burrow to win the Super Bowl. I thought you just said the Chiefs and the Rams. What did I say? The Chiefs and the Rams were in the Super Bro, Bowl. Bro, fucking stupid then. It's the, no, the Bengals just beat the Chiefs. So it's the Bengals and the Rams in yeah. the Super Bowl. I need to get my shit right. Uh Oh, God. Well, I drank it. I jinxed it. Oh, well. Anyways. <laughs> so, who's the underdog pick? I don't know because, like, for a while, the Bengals, like, if you had said. So, the Rams in the are season, in their home. They're in their place. Yeah, it's in their home place. That's not really going to mean shit. Like, right. Honestly, because 
tickets are so damn expensive. It's going to be whoever can afford them. It's not really about. I think they split up the tickets too. Yeah. Like you can buy them from either like the Bengals team organization or from there. But hmm. um, I, I'm going with the underdog pick just because I'm going to be. A I hipster. don't know what the underdog pick is. You got to, right. to pick. You have to I got to pick out. the Bengals. Then All right. you say in Rams. No, that's not what I said. That's what you said, said earlier. The Rams. No. Uh, that's my pick. I'm sticking with Delaney it. says Stafford. I don't know who Stafford plays that's for. That's the quarterback for the Rams. Okay. Yeah, so the Stafford. Rams are going to win? I mean, they're going to have a they're going to have a, a crazy uh, halftime show and stuff like that going yeah. on. Again, we kind of – I don't remember. Yeah, if it's we, gonna be, it should be a good game, huh? Yeah. Like, the last few Super Bowls, it's kind of been kind of hit or miss, but I think it's going to be really So good. when did you first uh, – Oh, Stafford is underdog. Okay. Okay. Um, shout out again to super producer Delaney in the in the room with us. Golden Thank House you. Entertainment making this look real pretty, real good. And introducing some new complications, but we figuring out all along the way. <laughs> um, it just it's mostly on like you know like my my thing died, my recorder died. Like we got some new tech here. Yeah. It's worth it. It sounds good. We're still learning. It's an amateur podcast, but now we got a professional in the house. Super professional. Um, Delaney films lots of stuff, but I, I know her most from doing wedding photography and videography. Uh, you can find her page on Instagram at Golden House Entertainment, Facebook at Golden House Entertainment. Um, I'm going to put it in the description. Um, she just offered to come in, make us look good, make yeah. us look pretty, up the I, production I it looks, value. It looks good. We'll see. No one even watches it anyway. I, lie. I know some people watch it. Now, I like to watch it. and You're it's, the only one that I know watches it. Because that's how I like to digest content. Yeah. When someone says something funny, I like to see the face value. I like to yeah. see their faces and all this stuff. It's more personal. Like I get to watch these people and and not necessarily watch myself, but like watch other, you know, yeah. I, I watch everything. And uh, podcasts is the whole thing about it. It's long form entertainment where you don't just have to say something quick and get it over with. Yeah. It's this whole thing where um, things can be, you know, expounded on. Yeah. But I guess that's it. We're just rambling now. Um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, always remember what it is, what it isn't, what it could be. I think you don't have anything else to talk about. Uh, I think that's good. We, we about we covered it up. up. Thanks for tuning in again, y'all. Like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. Comment, like, dislike if you hate it. Um <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but it's been Kyle and Lane. Peace. Later, y'all.